Hello everyone, and this is today's public broadcast. It's about 2 p.m. ish in U.S. Eastern Time. It's Wednesday, April 4th, 2012. I'm in Lakewood, Ohio of the United States, which is a small suburb just west of Cleveland. Uh, my name is Inta Mitterbach, and I'm bringing this to you today by Black Star on the Wire Productions. And uh, I'm... Uh, I've got some some photos I've taken today, and uh, it's kind of a nice sunny day. And uh, well, actually, here's here's uh, what the aquarium looks like today. It's not the greatest, uh, not the greatest shot, but but this is it. And uh, the fish are a little blurry, but I don't know. There's some some aeration there. It looks kind of polluted, actually. It's got an extremely high level of algae, but the fish are all doing well. And I wanted Alec to know that her fish are doing fine, and. Uh, they seem to be cohabitating well with the uh, the new fish. Seem to be cohabitate cohabitating well with the old fish, and uh, so there there's that. And uh, this is this is my Christmas cactus, and I just wanted to kind of this is what it looks like right now today, and uh, it's doing very well. It has. Uh, in December it's got a lot of flowers and uh, it has in the past anyway but kind of a mystery somebody watered my Christmas cactus while I was gone a couple weeks ago and uh, I was gone I don't know for for two or three weeks and uh, about two and a half weeks and somebody watered my Christmas cactus and I don't know who it is and uh, my family claims that they didn't and I have no idea who who's been watering my plants <clears throat> here's the other aquarium the two little goldfish now this is kind of a mystery too I'm not sure about this one the uh, this is what are these guys names I have names for all my fish who are these? I, I don't know if I, I'm not going to remember right now. I'll have to because I don't call them by name all the time. But they're friendly goldfish, and uh, and and they uh, they allow me to pet them. They're only a couple inches long. I don't know, maybe about three inches long, ish. And uh, the one on the left, actually, his dorsal. I, I don't know what that's called. The dorsal bone or whatever. It's not his dorsal fin, but along but along the dorsal edge of his, you know, the top top uh, edge of his body. He had a uh, he had a black stripe along the type uh, along the top. And now the uh, and one day he I guess disappeared and the black stripe is gone and now he's got a white tummy. So that's a mystery too. What was that guy's name? His name was Marino. And uh, the little black stripe on top, it just kind of, I called him Merino because it made me think, you know how Marines always have those little, those little Marine haircuts. My brother, my brother John, uh, he was a Marine and, and so I named him Merino. And Merino is actually a place in the, uh, I think it's an, an island in the, uh, in the Pacific and, uh, you know, one of the Pacific Islands. What's this? Oh, Solomon. The, the one on the right, that's Solomon. And there's the Solomon Islands. And uh, I had named these guys after islands. And it was Marino and Solomon. So that's them. They're doing great. And uh, I know this doesn't look like the cleanest thing. I, I think it's just the aeration showing up or, or maybe. But it's not real, real in focus. But that's Marino and Solomon. And I was kind of wondering, you know, in terms of pets. These are some of my pets. And I was wondering if the... Uh, what what are pets like around the world? Do uh, do people around the world have pets, and what kind of pets do they have? And do they have pet stores? And what are their pet books like? And um, do they have the same kind of pets? To, you know, questions like that. 197 countries and territories. What do kids and people around the world have as pets? Uh, that's one of my questions. It's still a mystery unsolved. These are some of. This is like some of the. Uh, some of the uh, garden area outside. It's a beautiful sunny day. It's uh, you know it's spring here and uh, starting to warm up. It's uh, it's a nice day and uh, these little flowers here and the little shrubs are uh, are uh, in bloom and and they I think these guys stay in bloom maybe uh, throughout the um, throughout the summer. I'm not sure. I haven't noticed. Maybe I should pay more more closer attention. Um, but anyway, that's that. Little purple flowers, and this is pretty, huh? <clears throat> so, this is a hyacinth, a pink hyacinth, very fragrant. This is what the uh, hyacinths, one, one of the hyacinth flowers in the yard looks like today, 
very nice. And these are grape hyacinths. Actually, the, the pink hyacinth, those are typically, I, I think of those, you know, in terms of Easter, and Easter's coming, and the hyacinths are all coming up, and they're all very fragrant. I don't know if these guys have fragrance, but these are the grape hyacinths, and there's some, oh, it looks like there's some of that ground cover there. You know, Simon says we don't want any ground cover. Those little green leafy things, those are actually a special type of ground cover, but I guess Simon says you got to remove all of that. But those those are special. They have a uh, little, they, well, let me point. Here it is right here. See that? Uh, those are... Uh, those are little uh, little ground cover. They actually they, they grow up into big bushy kind of things, and they have like a special yellow juice in their uh, I don't know their their plant vein, whatever the system is. I'm not really a botanist, and I really don't know that much about all of that. But they have like a special little yellow juice that apparently the the uh, the old world people from Latvia uh, would use as a uh, some sort of medicinal thing like, uh, I don't know, some sort of uh, a skin thing, like if you've got a cut or so I'm not sure what it is, I don't know if it's like it, it, mosquitoes or what, but but there's some something about the uh, yellow juice and whatever that plant is, and it has little yellow, pretty little yellow flowers also that, um, this, what is this? These things, these are, these are more ground cover, these are nice little things, they have special little purple flowers on them which you can't really see it's more of a reddish purple and it's it's got a nice little leaf this is some more of that ground cover that Simon says is illegal in the uh, I guess anything on the ground Simon considers to be a weed but anyway here's here's some of the hyacinths and those you know here's here's all those weeds combined on those nice, look at the nice little grasses in there. Those are special kind of grasses. Those aren't just regular grasses. Those are, they, are, they aren't really monkey grasses, but I don't know. I just kind of like it, but I guess Simon doesn't like it. There's, well, I just kind of liked this shot with this. That's some part of the grape arbor that's left. I took out all the grape arbor because... Well, uh, the, those grapes, what are you going to do? They were Concord grapes, nice grapes. You know, you can make pies and stuff, but what the, it, it made a big mess, and, and the house was all, um, I guess my house has been recited, so it all had to come down for the reciting. And, and I don't drink, so I'm not going to make wine. And um, what else? I, I don't know what else. I guess I could make pies out of them if I, uh, if I allowed the uh, grapes to grow. I think they're Concord grapes, and I think there are three of these guys. The, the wood in the background is, and the little pink hyacinth in the front. But I thought that made kind of a nice picture with the, with the flower in the foreground and the, uh, the little uh, grape vine in the background. And uh, this is just a little young rose bush sprig that caught my eye. I liked the red contrast there with the green kind of, it's kind of like new growth. You know, the rose bushes have kind of a reddish cast when they are the, uh, you know, when, you're, when they have new growth. So, and some tulips. These are very nice little pink tulips. With uh, those are more the green in the background is more of the hyacinth uh, vegetation, and uh, so more grape hyacinth. And I, I'm still practicing photography, trying to get it right. This stuff, you know, a lot of this looks out of focus, but. Here's one of the yucca doos. I, I have one of these yucca do plants, and this actually, later on in the summer, it'll get some nice tall white flowers. Oh, there's, I think, what do we have here? Yeah, look at all that. It's just beautiful, lush vegetation. I like it, but I guess, you know, I guess the city of Lakewood doesn't want this. So, here's some more. I, I, think, I, I think the city of Lakewood just wants perfectly manicured uh, nothing but a flower. Remove everything, but there's the flower and there's the flower petal, and uh, that's that's all they want in the yards and gardens area. They want everything removed. They don't. They want everything real clean, or real, real, real clean. They don't. They want nothing but the flower and the the leaf. Here's a tulip. Look, some more of that vegetation back there. That's all illegal. That looks like it might be grass in the uh, garden area. And uh, I don't think they want any grasses in the garden area. That's all got to be probably mowed down. I, probably when they mow that down, the tulips will get mowed down too. 
There's some more of the grape hyacinths. Different, different. I have these in, you know, throughout the garden area. Oh, daffodil. Isn't that beautiful? Yellow daffodil. How nice. This is what all the flowers look like in my garden today. And uh, the garden was really, really beautiful. I've been here for 10 years, and it was really beautiful when I moved in. Mr. Ansomes took very, very good care of the, of the garden. And I was told Mr. Ansomes was out here working in the garden every day, all day, to keep it looking the way it needed to be. I've got to get a job. I can't work in the garden. <laughs> I'm not old enough to stay home and work in the garden 24 hours a day or all day. I'm not old enough to do that, and I, I'm really not, uh, you know, that's that's not what I want to do, and that's that's not what I'm able to do right now. I, I kind of need to get a job and and uh, get back out there. I can't spend 24 hours a day in, in working on the garden and making sure that, oh, here, here's some of, I think those are some of the, the yellow, the, the yellow juice plants, things that are so special. Yeah, we removed all those last year for Simon. We removed everything, cleared everything out, reduced it all to nothing but dirt, almost entirely. And uh, so this is right here, the white flower. That's another hyacinth. These, these are in blue, purple, pink, yellow, white. They come in all colors. Here's some more daffodils. And uh, right behind them, if you can see the reddish green sort of, uh, and the reddish green kind of, uh, <clears throat> What is this? Reddish green kind of plants, foliage. The reddish green, the, well, the stems, the reddish green. I think those might be, what are those called? What the heck are those called? Gosh, I'm at a loss right now. I, I'll, I'll have to come back to that. Here's some more of them, and this is kind of out of focus. This is more the, uh, the, uh, the ants get all over these things. They love them. They're very sweet, very fragrant. Actually, they, yeah, they're very fragrant, but it's kind of a pungent smell that I don't really like, but, but they are very fragrant. And uh, so anyway, ants love them because I think they're full of sugar or something sweet, nectar or something. When they do, they do find, oh, peonies, that's what they're called, peonies. This, this is the, uh, this, this will be a royal peony when it's in full bloom. Let me go back here. See the stems there behind the uh, daffodils, the reddish green stems at the top of the screen. That was, that's another peony plant back there. And uh, So anyway, they, they're absolutely beautiful, royal peonies. Here's another tulip, very nice. Looks like there's some daffodil flowers, some more of those yellow flowers, yeah. Here's some hyacinths. It's a beautiful day outside. This is a different... I don't know if these are bluebells. I think these might be bluebells. Maybe a t I don't think those are hyacinths. I think maybe those are bluebells, but I'm not sure. And uh, these are uh, some more tulips in the yard. I was just trying to go around and take pictures of all the uh, flowers in the yard and what it, what we've got out there today. And uh, very nice. And then these are my this actually I took these pictures early this morning about nine o'clock. And this was the sunrise uh, looking to the, uh, well, I was looking to the, uh, I was in the backyard looking to the east, and that, that was the sun coming up. I think it was about 9 o'clock. And uh, this was looking over the, uh, well, I've got a pussy willow tree back there, and this, I was looking over to the west in the sky, and as you can see, the sky is clear. No clouds in the sky, and a beautiful sunny day. That was the top of the pussy willow tree. It's a big one. More tulips. This is actually this is in the front yard. Some little tulips planted there. More tulips in the front yard. Oh, look! Simon's gonna be angry. There's there's some grasses growing in the tulip bed area. Simon's going to be very angry. So uh, this is looking looking to the. Uh, what am I doing here? I'm looking to the west down my street. That's my shadow in the foreground. I thought, you know, I might leave that in there. Usually I try to cut out shadows and things like that, but I thought I'd leave the shadow there. That's my shadow there, and I'm taking a picture to the west, looking at the sky and the trees. As you can see, you know, the trees are, it's, well, it's April, and they aren't in, uh, they're not full of leaves or anything yet. They're just getting some little greenery on them now, and this is looking down the street from the center of the street to the east, and that was the sunrise. It was just a. This is in the front of the house, and uh, so just kind of look. And that's me. My that's not me. That's my house. That's my house, and uh, 
my little mouse house. And uh, that's my flag, my American flag, and I apologize to everyone. I'm not sure what that means, but I have it. It's turned upside down, and to me that symbolizes that, you know, I'm an American, I, and I've been turned upside down, and I've been subjected to a lot of things that I consider to be abuses and assaults of what I consider to be my constitutional rights and the declaration. I was, you know, trying to examine the the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and those things more closely, and uh, take a look at them and understand them. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, but I, uh, you know, I wasn't the greatest student, and I didn't pay attention, and so I was, I guess, uh, for the past 16 years, I've tried to look at things more seriously and more deeply, and uh, so anyway, and and I've been banged up and hurt pretty badly in the past 16 years since I've returned to Cleveland from. Uh, Huntsville, Alabama, and uh, I was down there working as a, uh, well, I was a mom and a wife, and uh, pretty happy, doing pretty well, special life, special things, special people, I guess everyone is, and uh, very nice life, and I was working for a defense contractor, and I got hurt, and I don't know exactly, it seemed like it came from every direction, and it seemed like the whole world hurt me, and I don't know who's responsible or why, but I feel like my flag, my American flag, myself, me, myself, and I, and my flag got turned upside down. So there it is. It's upside down. There's a picture of it. Maybe that's a, a, a heresy. I'm not sure. Maybe it's the worst uh, sign of disrespect. I don't know, but I kind of feel like that's what's been done to me, and that's how my flag is flying there upside down, and I'd like to turn it right back side up, but it's not going to be back side up until my life is... Uh, is turned around in terms of you know people people need to stop doing things they're not supposed to and and uh, and I'm not sure exactly what all needs to be done but uh, I I don't need to be living here being hurt so that's got to stop and when it stops maybe I I think at that point maybe I'll turn my flag right side up again anyway thank you have a great day it is what where are we let's see oh there, there's my there's my neighbor's house with the black star on the door. And that's, I'll, I'll, I'll have to talk more about that, but I think I'm going to bring this to a close. And, uh, well, what, what can I say about the Black Star? I learned about black programs and uh, when I was living in Alabama. They mentioned black programs, and I gave it some thought. And uh, I've heard about a lot of things, black balling in the United States, which was an issue that happened um, back, you know, I think people have been blackballed, and I'm not sure I understand or know a lot about that. You know, I think it was an industrial thing. I think the government's involved. I don't know about the military. I don't know a whole lot about the military. Um, and uh, I'm kind of a newbie to the whole military life, and uh, uh, I'm not in the military. But, but as far as black stars go, I, yeah, I think there was something called black programs and uh, companies uh, and contractors and businesses and whatever working. Uh, maybe supporting the defense and war efforts and things like that. I'm not sure, but I think that's the Black Star. But the Black Star kind of caught my eye on someone's house one day, and I started thinking about it, and I thought, you know, they've uh, the people that had the responsibility for those black program jobs, they've, they've got, that's, that's a serious thing that they had to live with, and uh, I don't know, you know, in terms of confidentiality levels and the work that they were doing, that, that may have been a real... A real, uh, I don't know, difficult thing to do, I guess. So anyway, the the black star kind of caught my eye one day. It was on someone's house that I saw, I think, out in North Olmsted or Bay Village or something. And after it caught my eye, my it, that one showed up on my neighbor's house, and I don't, I don't, and and uh, I've got, kind of got problems with my neighbor, and um, and uh, it's I don't know if everyone knows what a Jones is and being Jonesed and things like that, but I kind of felt like oh. Does she want one of those, too? You know, I, I don't think she worked on a black program, and I don't think she had that responsibility, and I don't think she uh, has that understanding, and uh, and uh, th and that's kind of what that meant to me, and maybe I'm wrong, but, um, and and I just kind of felt like, oh, she, she, wants, she wants to wear one of those, too, and take credit for that. So, anyway, that's that. And, uh, oh, this is my refrigerator. This is a reminder that I need a job. Here, here it is. This is the contents of my, oh, look, Soylent, Soylent Green. It's totally Soylent Green. I have two jars of jelly. That's probably more than some people have, but that's pretty bad for me because I was, like, feeling pretty, I don't know, pretty comfortable most of my life, and this is where I'm at. 
and I'm on disability and it's kind of a forced thing. I don't want to be on disability. I actually called them up and said, you know, I don't want disability anymore. Stop it. And they sent me a letter and said, no, you, you can appeal it if you want. And uh, I, I don't like being forced on disability for any reason. I don't want to be assaulted or harassed or anything else onto disability. And that's that. And there's probably a lot of people in the military who have wound up on disability, a lot of people for a lot of reasons on disability, and they don't want to be on disability either. So I kind of feel like I'm being punished and forced to be on disability, and I don't know, I don't know why I have to have that experience. But uh, uh, anyway, oh, the cup to the right. I was saving, uh, saving cups from a from my fast food visits like McDonald's and Burger King and stuff, saving my co coffee cups and using them to uh, as containers for my survival foods, which is basically making a, like a big pot of soup or, or spaghetti or something, and uh, and putting the, using these uh, these cups from fast food restaurants that are like carryout cups. Uh, it, using those to freeze, store and freeze my foods in, uh, my survival foods, where I make massive quantities of one pot of soup or something and then freeze it and live on that for a month and try to try to survive on $10 worth of food. It's very, oh God, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. I made myself so sick trying to survive on $10 in food, but that was that was one of my efforts to try to survive on what few dollars I've got. Not that I'm the greatest manager of money all the time, but uh, anyway, I'm not doing so well with that. But this is this is the end of the month. This is this is uh, fortunately I've got mom and dad. I can run over to their house and get a meal. A lot of people don't have that. And as far as meals go, we have soup kitchens in the United States. But I did recently call uh, 211, which is the uh, which is the uh, national number to call, first call for help. It's 211. It's not available everywhere, but if you ever find yourself in distress, try 211. You might have to dial 1211. I'm not sure, but it's available to dial to get help uh, with regard to social services throughout the country of the United States. Uh, social services, if you're looking for AA meetings or help with housing, shelter, food, whatever, soup kitchens, stuff like that. In Lakewood, I called and found out that there's only, the soup kitchens are only open in this area maybe once a month. Uh, you can go get a meal once a month, but we do have pantries in this area, which is where you can go get a, uh, like a three-day supply of groceries. So uh, I told the guy, thank you for the information. I'm trying to hold out here, and uh, mom and dad are helping me. This is my freezer. It's empty. And uh, this, well, no, it's not completely empty. This is the door of my freezer. I've got a couple containers there, fast food containers. for uh, That's milk that I've frozen to try to preserve milk because I don't go through a container of milk real quickly. So I, I froze the milk and tried to preserve it so that, you know, it wouldn't go sour. Um, and there's three containers of my survival foods frozen there. And... Uh, there's the condiments. <laughs> the condiments. There's a bo there's a bottle of wine. I don't drink, but I've got a bottle of wine. It's more like a I don't know, like a dessert wine or something. It's just there. I didn't drink it. I, I used it for some cooking or something or have. I think we all tried it and, and decided we didn't like it. But that's there. And I've got some juice and some uh, Crystal Light and uh, some sour milk and and uh, Welch's uh, soda. That was my daughter's. She left here and. So anyway, I've got some condiments, I guess. Oh, and these are what I refer to as oxygen machines. I have some cuttings of my mom's plants growing in water, and uh, it makes me feel like I have life in the vicinity of my environment here so that I can, uh, you know, add to the, uh, I guess, the oxygen. I think that's an orchid right there, an orchid cutting. It's not doing great, but it's still alive, and... Uh, there's a wandering Jew plant. Oh, this was one of my efforts to educate kids. I was like, okay, what if oranges got, this is my little chemistry lesson for my kids, my grandkids and stuff. I didn't get to be a mom because I wound up in a divorce and I didn't get to be the mom I wanted to, I guess. I'm still a mom, but I didn't get to do all the things that I wanted to do because I got separated from my children. But I was doing things like write citric acid on the orange, and that's the uh, the chemical composition C6H807. What's that? Carbon 6, hydrogen 8, and oxygen 7. I think my chemistry professor at Cleveland State would be happy with that. And uh, that little attempt to educate kids about chemistry. And, you know, there's different... I, I wrote the, the chemical composition of Freon. 
on the uh, refrigerator door so that they'd be aware of that and th you know things like that just to be aware of chemical compositions my chemistry teacher his lesson was you better know your chemistry because do you know what the heck they're putting in the uh, toothpaste and are you going to wind up without teeth you know is it going to hurt your teeth so make sure you know your chemical compositions and elements and all of that stuff so that that was kind of and next that's me and my baby my little baby girl she's all grown up now but I was feeling sad this morning that's when she graduated from high school she just moved back down to Alabama that's when she was about four years old just before I uh, filed for a divorce that was on that was when I was living really wood good that, that really really living well that was on the back of our 26 foot boat and we also had a 40 foot boat and uh, I'm not doing so well but I, I'm trying and, and it's you know it's real difficult when you're getting uh, I feel like I'm getting beat up from every direction you know quite a test here but anyway that's my little baby and I've, uh, I've got an issue with the neighbor about saying something to my my little baby that wasn't real nice and she never did apologize to, uh, to me for it and I don't like you know living where my my family and friends are being harassed 